I guess to uh, to preface this discussion, I, I have to ask the question, the question that is posed so so bravely and, and maybe so honestly in the in the intro track to this this wonderful album. Uh, you know, this is what we've all been waiting for, right? Christian, is this is this what everyone is in the salon for? Is this what everyone's getting their nails done for? Yeah. Like is, is this this is it. This is it. This is a hundred percent it. This is this is what everyone's in the salon for, the barbershop for. Yeah. I got my titties done for this, Getting mine scheduled for when I see him live eventually. Yeah. I'm gonna. Get yeah. We actually. Great, have uh, uh, we could. There could have been a great joke here about about Drake getting his abs done for this, but that's whatever. Well, we well, actually, Caleb and I were off air discussing that Keith was going to be in the area, and I said it would not. The optics on me seeing Chief Keith live will be bad. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> well. You know, unlike another artist that we talked about, Chief Keith expressed trying to become a better dad on this album. <laughs> <laughs> another uh, artist would not know nothing about <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> nothing none about that. <laughs> uh, this is this this. I, I don't even know how to start. This is just an. This this album has made my week, month, day, whatever you want to call it, man. This this is this is a ray of sunshine. Uh, after a after a fairly depressing week in terms of big hip hop news, as a fairly depressing month in terms of my life, this has been very good. Well, I wasn't trying to get too personal. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Uh, Discord listeners will know this has not been great for old Patrick, and this is this has been good. It's been good yeah. for me. No. It's it's a true a true ray of sunshine for all of us. I think Christian, I'm sure you feel you feel the same way about this. The thing is, I was pretty. I'm not gonna lie. I was I wasn't like crippling or anything, but it was it was a little emotionally shocking. I just mm -hmm. watched guys who I had respect for, especially Kendrick, crash out. You know, they just totally I don't know what happened. And this was like the polar opposite of that, where I just saw another artist that I like become a better person over time. And I never thought I was a bad guy, but he just he's grown into a better person. He's gotten sober from lean, which I'm super happy about. And he is at his best creatively and made a fucking awesome album that we all didn't think was going to come out. And well, stuff completely. Was Keith the guy? Was it Keith or Thug? I forget who called an airport employee a peasant. Um, you remember that story? That's a, that's, I don't, I honestly don't have a recollection of, of who. Uh, there was, was one of them. Uh, I think that might have been Thug, actually. Yeah, because that doesn't sound like something Keith would do. Yeah, they I think it was Thug. I, at the end of the day, they are both, you know, millionaire dudes. Like, I'm not going to, like, you know, get I, it. Is, I, with, is Keith but, really a millionaire? I guess they're probably both millionaires. Probably in, probably Keith, in, in, uh, in, in Keith's uh, place, probably from more earlier. Uh, I mean, that's not really, his... like, worth litigating, though. But still, like, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that was Thug, actually. There was a story, like, around the same time they were both breaking out. One of them called, like, a... Uh, airport employee get out of my face you peasant and that really just like pissed me off that one of them that they did that but yeah. i'll have to i'll have to look it up and, and, and see I'll I'll, I'll 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 give a look but yeah but yeah oh. i know what you're saying in terms of being a better person like just yeah, kind yeah, of well, a better person like, i don't like a great person per se but i feel like he's 
he's become like a more whole person. And that's what I've gotten out of this, this album is like, he wants to be a good dad. He's getting tired of just blowing his money on cars and shit. He's becoming more spiritual. And I don't think you have to, at least in the spiritual case and, uh, I get, you know, whatever. I don't, I, it, it, I don't think any of that is like a rite of passage other than being a good dad, um, for becoming a better, more fulfilled person. But it's just really nice. Cause I love trap. I love when it gets grimy and nasty too, but like, it's also very unfortunate to see how much pain and suffering a lot of trap artists have been through, let alone the communities they're from and what they've been through. So it's nice to see on the other end of that, an artist still going hard, making bangers, having fun, but is also letting us know they're in a good place. They're in a better place at least, and their life is improving and they are improving as people. They maybe not aren't where they need to be or anything, but it's not moving in the other direction, which is really, Really nice to see because after Fredo Santana died, I was worried about what happened to his And to see what he's done in that aftermath and how he stuck to his word and staying away from lean. Um, he works out a lot more now. And I watched his Zane Lowe interview, it was very, he was super clear minded and articulate. And you could tell he wasn't fucking around with like heavy drug use anymore and had gotten relatively in a better place. And it's awesome to see that, you know, I, I don't, when I listen to trap, I don't want to just fetishize the pain that the artists go through very often, especially in the more street oriented trap stuff. That stuff's interesting to hear. And of course it's musically just a bangers, but it's not, it's nice to see things moving in a positive direction too, you know, especially because the music, regardless of its subject matter is just fucking nuts. <laughs> I think also a lot of what you're saying coincides with and keith mentions it and he's mentioned it previously and you know he's a long long tail of a discog but blowing up at such a young age and yeah. and being you know he even talks about how um on one of the songs on on the record believe which is an amazing song and it just but he talks about how he uh, you know he 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 uh, never really had a childhood because he was you know selling drugs and doing this and that at a very, a very, very young age, you know, before he even, like, was, you know, like, a big puberty age. And then he, like, blows up on this sound that he is, you know, uh, um, uh, the, the central figure of, along with Young Chop. And he's, what, when did Don't Like Him out? He was 16 when, when Don't Like came out? Something, something to that effect? Um, so that's just, like, insane to even think about, and and to be so huge and be such a big rising figure in the industry. And then you have this long gestating career where you go through all these different, you know, alleyways and, and roads and pathways. And then you end up here with a sequel to a seminal mixtape you made a decade ago that people caught on to years after the fact and wasn't appreciated in its time, like so much of this stuff. I mean, Keith is. I think we'd all agree one of the most influential and, and trailblazing rap artists of, of the last of the century. I think that's a fair uh, you know thing to say um, when looking at his whole body of work and the, what came after him and what he did in terms of you know, his own music. But this is like a this feels like a much deserved victory lap and and. Uh, kind of moment of celebration for an artist that deserves to be celebrated, especially as you said, Christian, given his long career and, and what he's presented himself as and what he's, you know, talked about in, in like in the Zane Lowe stuff and how he is now compared to the struggles and trials and tribulations he went through, you know, throughout his whole life, really, especially his life in, in, in music. You know, this is not a back from the dead three. That's insanely dark. This is not nobody. 10 years ago, uh, which is, you know, Patrick's talked about before on the show, just like a very, like, soul-destroying kind of uh, mixtape, but this is, uh, this is, a this is the ray of sunshine, this is, uh, a, a very, like, exultant feeling I get by listening to a, a lot of this, and it really starts from track one and just the whole way down. Right, but yeah. it's definitely not something that's come out of nowhere, like, if you follow his discography, like, it, it's not out of no like it, 
you can get from nobody to back from the dead to to thought breaker to here like it his mm-hmm. sound progresses as a producer or as who, who he works with in his own production too like he starts producing himself like in terms of the sounds he's working with his drums everything he in terms of crafting hooks melodies everything like even on nobody that's like very ossified and soul dead but the melodies he's working with is the sort of stuff that he would progress into the sort of brighter things that would become melodic on Fornam, which is kind of jubilant on here like it's really a building process Mm. I think, in terms of songwriting. Like, he gets... Like, I think he needs to get more credit in terms of being a songwriter. Like, not just making one type of music. And that's like, and that's not real intentional at all. Like, I think that that was one thing that he got painted into a corner when he started as just being kind of just a trap guy or a drill guy. Or, but drill wasn't a thing when he started doing it. He mm-hmm. made a genre. Yeah. Yeah. And influenced other scenes across the globe. You know, there are drill scenes now all over the world, in large part of what Chicago was doing. And yeah, yeah like other artists huge. like Bill Dirk that completely flourished under him, Lil Reese, RP, like, and. Yeah, so, so many others that have cited him as an influence in the, in the years that follow, you know, like it's. It's, it's it's crazy whether you're from the city or not. I mean, Cardi is an obvious touchdown in my opinion as well. For for Keith, Cardi has you can obviously cite an artist as being influential if Kanye latched onto them when they were starting and he tried to suck all their fucking influence out. He's like Madonna or Drake in that way. He like swag drag, and I don't like in 2012. He was right there. So, all right, it's like Pusha T. Three, three hoes trifecta, right? That's what he said on that? Well, I mean, I don't know if that was really Kanye or Pusha. That was right when Pusha started with Good, so that might have been Pusha actually kind of maybe his first move, but I don't know. They, they were, it, you know, it's the remix, that's such a funny song. Um, well, I remember that was the first time people I really heard, like, on smoking section and stuff, were like, oh, Kanye really sold out, lost it, because, it, like, you know, he came back. I mean, not like the obvious first 808s and Heartbreaks thing, because that was an artistic pivot or whatever, but like he came back with uh, Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, but then he started doing the Cruel Summer uh, stuff, and then he did the I Don't Like Remix, so he lost it, and because he did the I Don't Like Remix. Right, right. And, yeah. But I don't, I don't know how much of that was like Push's influence versus Kanye trying to suck off a new talent, like new talent, like swag style. Yeah. I don't yeah, I mean, I didn't I didn't mind the don't like remix. It was cool. I like the original more. Um but yeah, as far as Kanye like trying to, you know, bleed Keith dry for influences early on, I mean, yeah, that definitely I think happened. nobody I think nobody's great. I still do, honestly. I think that's really great. Like I really do like that style of Kanye doing auto tune though, but and 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 hold my liquor. Yeah, yeah, hold my liquor is fantastic. It is the best song that either of them made together. You know. Well, I I love that Mike Dean style of just like really languid auto tune, just really long form thing that they were doing on that. So mm. that's also very Cuddy esque too. Like that's also yep. on like that's a big part of Jesus. For sure. For sure. As, as much as I would like to. Label that as cursed words. You are correct. <laughs> yeah, there were so many cursed words in that sentence that I said right there. But <laughs> this half of those words not in the Bible. But <laughs> but yes, yes, absolutely. But anyway, yeah. Uh, so the point in that being that Keith was like very early on, very influential, and that 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 remains to be the case. And, and really, we've heard. A lot of the influential, like like I said, I, I talked about as a touchstone, you know, Cardi on the the Keefe song on Mansion Music is an obvious like oh you know light bulb moment. Uh, you can see the 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 uh, 
the influence on that generation and ones to follow uh, because of the longevity of Keith's career and him only being, uh, you know, 29 years old is a pretty, uh, or he's, I don't even know if he's 29 yet, but he's, I think he, I think on the Zane thing, they said he was 29, something of that. The fact that he's not yet 30 and he's been around for so long and he, this album kind of feels like a, uh, reflective, reflective of maybe how far he's come. Uh, well, he has the one line about I was born in '95. I've been ready since I was not since it was '91. Yeah, right, right. He has a lot of really cool, absurd bars like that on this album. I really feel like this is his actual lyrical, like best out. Like, and no one's going to ever say Chief Keep's a lyrical rapper. I think he's got so many funny lines on this album. When I first listened to Keep, I always enjoyed him on the mic. I, it took me a little while to get into his auto tune stuff, but when he was just doing his like regular rapping, it was really cool to me back then. But I would say, like in the beginning, I wasn't really paying too much attention to what he was saying versus just how he was saying it—the cool chanted hooks he could do, how anthemic it all was. But like, it lyrically didn't really matter much to me. But on this album, like. He really, and, and over the course of his career, you know, as Patrick said, it's it's been a progression over the years. But um, it's, it's so crazy to see how his lyricism has caught up with his charisma and flow now. And you actually have to, like, pay attention to what he's saying in his raps more because it's actually pretty substantial stuff in terms of just wordplay and all that. On top of it, being like infectiously catchy. I mean, I wouldn't say he's ever been super lyrical, nor would I say he like this ain't like, you know, Lupe Fiasco type album. But yeah. I feel like in terms of actually having punchlines, this is more of a Gucci album than he's ever done. Like I kind of feel yeah. like this is sort of how I wish he rapped on the album on Big Gucci Sosa a little bit. But I guess that was better on that album because it's kind of better to have him as a counterpoint hook guy for Gucci being a, a punchline guy. And I don't know, like where he's at now in his career, he's evolved to the point where he can do what Gucci was doing there. It's like, he took the influence he had from the people he was listening to earlier in his career. He's at the point where he can rap like Gucci, like the people he was listening to, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, and I think then, before and, he had the raw talent, like before he was doing what he was able to do, and the people he was listening to gave him the ability to do what he's doing now. Yeah, I think there was more of a there was more of a raw spontaneity to some of the early early stuff that yeah. I personally yeah. find like amazing, and I'm not saying you guys don't find that. I'm just I'm, I'm pointing out like that 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 appeals to me greatly. But I think now, even in the most traditional, the most, even in the most, even if you ask the traditionalist, a uh, hip hop traditionalist, they would tell you that, like, you know, Keith is rapping on this, you know, and I use air quotes when I'm saying that, but he's, yeah. he's rapping even in the most traditional sense. There, there's a clear concerted structure to some of the, the songs and the verses that, that don't feel as nearly as off the cuff. Or just he would Keith used to have a lot of songs that were things were tangential, and this yeah. is very some of these songs are structured A B C in that way, um, yeah. which I think will appeal to a lot of people who may not have listened to Keith in a long time. You know, the, the more casuals. I think this is an album that is going to appeal do very well for the casual fan. Yeah. I would agree with that. It's more as it because like lyrically, like you said, and in song structure wise, it's, you know, it's a lot more accessible than some of his like more wild stuff. But I actually love his wild, like insane shit that he was doing early on, too. Um, I appreciate the growth of him as a lyricist. But like, for example, I was listening to Almighty So One today and that out that tape is chaotic as hell. It is just it's it's just, it's fucking insane. I still it, it, think nothing really sounds like it, honestly. Nothing. It's it's out of this fucking world. I mean, and like you want to talk about Haunted Mound? Like Haunted Mound got their entire sound from that mixtape. 100%. 100%. Yeah. 
a hundred percent. I'm not even and, hating and, on haunted mound. I'm not hating on haunted mound. I'm and they'll tell you that too. From, they'll, yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, they'll they'll say that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Again, no disrespect but, to haunted mound. They're great, but I'm saying like Keith was just that ahead of his time. But I won't. But don't discount just because he's gotten more structured doesn't mean that he's lost that spontaneity. Like these are not <laughs> you know boilerplate verses that he's doing. Oh, like some people slightest. give you one sixteen. He's still rhyming in ways that other people. He's still barely within the framework. And the other thing to remember here is he's producing himself. And he produces himself in a way that nobody else would know to produce him. The drums are still barely within the framework, which yep. is great to hear. He has these weird ass trap drums that are just kind of bursting outside of the frame. And just the whole structure of it is just kind of within the structure, both in terms of songs and with albums, and just doesn't fully fit within the full three act structure somehow. I don't know. It's hard to put fully within like a coherent sentence, which is a great way to just frame Keith as an artist as a whole. I think yeah. like he's very <laughs> much in the, in the same category as Gucci, I think a little bit. That's why they fit so well as like a collaborator. That's why I think their collaboration project would never, was never going to live up to my expectations, but still good. Yeah, right. there, there, there's a lot to say about Keith, and 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 it's, it can be kind of hard to say it because he is, there is so much, and he's the same kind of artist that can do something where he can make a little. I don't even know who the fuck Lil Nar is. I had to look them up afterwards, and I'm like, well, that's as good as that was going to be. Like that's yeah. <laughs> I yeah. heard the, I heard the name before. I think I listened to one song because it was like a lyrical lemonade video that blew up. But I think that's about it. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, I, I if that I might be confusing it with somebody else. I don't even know. And also, I like love Whack World by Tierra Whack, and then everything else I'd heard from her in the past couple of years had been disappointing. And then Band It Up is amazing, absolutely. She, amazing. Oh my god, she like, was. She I did that, not expect her to oh, rap like that. That was so good. And then yeah, like back to back with the sexy red song that is mm -hmm. so well put together and the heart yep. of the album. Yep. That will, and the one before that, Runner, is fucking sick. I love the, the how soulful it is, and then it just comes in with the, like the his the first verse on that. Love that, love, love, love that song. And right. um, and like yeah, like on paper, this sequencing is so incoherent. In practice, it works so well. Like yep. if you explain this to somebody, they're like, "This makes no goddamn sense." The skit is so stupid. Like if you actually oh get somebody transcript of this skit they'd be like why am i listening to this man talk to me about this for so <laughs> long like yeah this skit was overkill but it somehow works in its own bizarre way not in the sense that it like even makes it better but it just it just clicks it's like oh okay there was room to have this on this album you didn't need to have it oh it you doesn't absolutely make did. the album like yeah, but it, it it made me laugh. Like yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, this is like I mean the the, the 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 skit into the song. I mean that song was way better than any right being like on paper, and <laughs> that whole run. I mean, there's so much to talk with the whole middle of the album. Like Patrick was saying, I mean one two three is electric. Like that is a rapping yeah. tour de force. No yep. bullshit. Like the way he. I love his um. What do you say on that? If I if I if I fall, I'm landing on all fours or something like that. I love 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 um that that song. Uh, I I like the uh he has the elute. What he says? Um, uh, I paid two one two three thousand for for these kicks, like all that. So yeah, it was yeah. Th those were insane songs. One, the beat too, the way it builds in world. Yeah, the way it did wait, I have to go back for a second. On two trim, which is another great beat. Do you guys catch the the, the flat earther stuff? That was funny. I, fall, uh, I um, didn't. I Earth, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was, what, that what, was, what did he say? It's like I'm something I fall I'm flat like the earth, I believe, or something. Oh like, <laughs> I do remember I remember like He the, said kind of uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said I'm rolling up what was it? Uh, um 
Gosh, I forgot. Don't what... you feel like genius? I'm actually gonna like great radio as. No, no, no. I have it. I have it in front of me because I I texted it to uh, I texted it to my friend. He said, "What I'm roll What I'm rolling up gonna have me flat like the Earth, bitch." <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, is, you it, know. it's even stuff like that, you know. I mean, uh, it's definitely eccentric. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's so charismatic. I'll just laugh that off. It's not like. You know, B.O.B. or something where I'm just like, yeah, fuck you. Like, and for all we know, Keith could just be saying that to make you laugh. Like, he could just be fucking around. He does that very, very often in his. Oh, movie. yeah. It struck well, me as a like, very it's silly. Like line. Neff, we'd probably be like, walk, like, yeah, like Neff probably has flat earth lines I've missed. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's got every line. <laughs> I was going to say, there, the, no stone is unturned with. Uh, yeah. <laughs> with, with, he's the man who. He, when he said. Yeah. Into. When he said he made crack taste like oxtail, I burst out laughing. I was like, what the fuck am I listening to in the best way possible? I was like, this is like if Gucci Mane and Lil B were in like a blender and did ecstasy or something. Like it was out of this. It was he was just anything would come out of his fucking mouth. Like when he said he would get <laughs> head from Deb Anthony. That's pretty much Quavo's verse. Is literally nonsense coming out of your mouth. <laughs> oh, wait, are, are we are we going to talk about the Quavo verse? Usk and whatever the fuck on his verse, like me and Elon, yeah. whatever the fuck on his, yeah. It didn't really stick with me one way or the other. I was more focused on just the beat and Chief Keef. Quavo, like, even I, I. I have to listen to the lyrics again. I don't honestly remember what he was yeah, talking I, about, but because uh, it was really stupid. But I'm gonna look it up now so I can quote things. I mean, he said yeah. to me, my biggest takeaway from the song is I love, love, love the beat, the piano. Yep, yep. Like, I love that. And to me, Quavo sounded good on it. Now I don't remember a single line, and that's fine. Yep. It's 2020. It's 2024. <laughs> So I can quote things. Uh, uh, so you know I'm a crash, Geico. Put me next to Elon, Elon. I'm high stepping like Dion. Uh, my heart so like froze cold. This is what Travis I'm Scott self- haters self- think on. Travis Scott sounds like. What are you doing in my section? We don't know this peon. Yo, bitch, looking so sexy. I'm trying to see what she on. Maybach, call it Quaybach. Never trap. Work. <laughs> I do remember that one. <laughs> I'm breaking okay. Kit Kat. Somebody tell me where the lick at. Then pop the pill, Tic Tac. You're not alone where your strap at. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Look, it's maybe I call it Quayback. I, I remember that right away. And yeah, like, Quayback. <laughs> Quayback is is a little funny. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I can like respect what he was doing because I gotta imagine he was hot as fuck when he did that first and like. I can understand him just like thinking of like the next most absurd thing he wanted to say out of his mouth, like just and just like going with it, like play back, whatever the fuck. Like, it just like was just deliberately trying to say the most like random crap possible, probably just because he couldn't think of anything else. I mean, that's no better than Maybach Mercedes, bitch. I named her Sadie, but for some reason, I give Keith a piece on a uh, pass on that. So. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It's not like it's like bad. It's it's just for me, it was like totally a filler feature, you know. Like it, it was there. Which, yeah, I mean, for Quavo, that's fine at this point. Like, no. so it was nice to see Quavo get a feature too, just because of how much he's been going through and the fact that a lot of his music hasn't been, you know, doing as commercially well as it used to. Um, it's just cool kind of seeing him in the mix still, but the feature was, you know, for as much industry shit and just real life shit that has kind of hurt Quavo's career path. He also has just been spinning his wheels for the last six years. So it, and that was just another example of that. It was just totally like AI Migos. It was like, there was nothing to it. But it wasn't bad. It just, it just. I mean, thankfully, it, it wasn't literal AI Migos with a takeoff feature on it. So <laughs> that's true. It, it, and look, that could have happened. It always I mean, yeah. gets worse. Yeah. So. Could be a really scary Unk and Few feature. Yeah, 
Pimp C fe- Drake featuring Pimp C next year with uh, AI DJ Scrooby. You're putting <laughs> you're putting evil out into the universe, Pat. Yeah, yeah that, that's this, manifesting this the opposite. That's a whole new level. So yeah. that's, you're, you're, that, you're actually that you're was... getting ahead of the you're getting ahead of the the news. Yeah, it prophetic. <laughs> Okay. Um, but yeah, I think like just on the topic of the ne- Never Fly Here song, like I like the song a lot. The, again, Quavo, you know, look, I just ask that you don't sound terrible in 2024, and I don't think yeah. he sounded terrible, so I can I can stomach whatever. Line yeah, no, he, he says. actually sounded really good. Like I'm making fun yeah. of his lyrics. He actually sounded really good, and that's mostly yeah, his, his, honestly what I ever expect out of Amigos songs. Yeah, he, he even does like that, a. He, he does a little bit of those like vintage Quavo hums, and you can kind of, you can kind of, if you squint hard enough, you can be like, okay, I, I, I think it's 2018. I think it's 2018. You know, you can, <laughs> can kind of get there mentally. If I can squint, if I can do whatever squinting your ear, your eardrums is, I can hear lifestyle in this. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of squinting. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> That's, that's, just an, that's how does it's an impressive squinting? amount of squinting. It's an impressive yeah. amount of squinting. But yeah, I mean, overall, I think that that's like that does a good job of of bringing the momentum back because it follows drifting away, which I think is an incredible song. Like, oh I my have, god, oh, just the constant. Yeah, just, uh, it's so beautiful. Like, it's just that's that's how, that's how I have to sum it up. Otherworldly, otherworldly song. I have listened to that close to 20 times at this point it is just uh, yeah I, I don't even really honestly know how to describe it i it's just it's fucking nuts it is such a good song I mean, and on headphones oh, holy man. crap i like when he says call the call the chicken police you know i'm having strips <laughs> <laughs> well that's what i mean about him being like gucci on this song album man like he's got punchlines like that constantly yeah also, and it's, subtle, subtle Yeet reference, uh, potentially. He said, uh, Keith, uh, he said, uh, he said something about like rims or something won't fit on the Tonka. I'm like, Yeet reference? Keith? But anyway, that's just a Caleb conspiracy. But no, I mean, that's a. Uh, I'm sure Keith has used that word like 10 years ago, and I'm not even, uh, I'm not even, I'm not even hip. I don't, I don't remember, but, but yeah, that was, that was funny. He also said, uh, Run your ass over like Suge Knight, right? I think you said that. Yeah, that, was yeah. that that actually made me laugh out loud when I was listening to it. <laughs> it's 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 like such a like you know like I said beautiful song, otherworldly, like, you know, <laughs> but it has funny, funny lines. Oh, is I, I love I love the line. What's funny is in terms of sequencing, drifting away should be where Tony Montana flow is. A hundred percent. Yeah. Why? Uh, oh, if we're gonna get I, to my sequencing comment, because I have nothing bad to say about this album at all. Nothing. Can I? Can I just say one thing though? One go quote ahead, that ahead, I, I thought was just bizarre and hilarious, and reminded me so much of Gucci Mane was, "Bitch, you not a TV. If you were, I would have been muted. You." I was like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> like, what is this?" Yeah, I heard that in Gucci, and voice. that's on drifting away. That in Gucci voice. <laughs> That was like that was. Yeah, cool. I heard that in like Gucci voice. <laughs> Shout out! Like I heard to... that in like nasal ass, like you know, like the the Gucci voice. Two thousand eight Gucci. <laughs> I also like the fact that he said this is a Kanye ass beat. Yeah, I should be in the Kanye suite. <laughs> yeah, that was very funny. Um, he also said. Uh, it she Sosa made drill Kanye thinks he did or something like that. Like something well, Kanye, Kanye probably did. does think he did. That's actually probably something Kanye says to people. Yeah. 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 Well, Kanye had some comment about it, like, right? I have no I idea. I have honestly have been I'm trying sure to. He does Kanye say with... that, but yes. that's true. The less oxygen devoted to him, the better these days, I guess. I mean, yeah, I actually I just, had a whole thing I was going to say about him musically, but to quote Kid Cudi talking about Wale, we don't fuck with you musically. Yeah. Real. 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 Also, uh, he, he has a, Keith has a Rey Mysterio reference, and while I'm not the most educated uh, wrestling observer, 
I do know Rey, Rey Mysterio, and I wanted to ask you, Pat. He doesn't is, actually jump off the top rope like that. No, he has fucked up knees. Uh, but I also want it. But, but, okay, uh, but yeah, no, I, I do know what line you're talking about. Okay, yes. but is so who is the more referenced wrestler? Is Rey Mysterio the most referenced one, or is it like Jeff Hardy, or is it somebody? Uh, like, uh, Rey Mysterio is more referenced because he's older, but Jeff Hardy's up there. But yeah. okay. Because I know those two guys get referenced quite a bit. I feel like in the in the grand scheme of, you know, rap and wrestling lately. I appreciate you pandering to my wrestling thing. Oh, no, like is it? Look, oh, it was a genuine question. I promise. But no, I mean, I I thought that was very funny because Rey Mysterio really doesn't jump off the top rope like at all. It's just funny because he like mostly jumps off the second rope because his knees are all fucked up. Mm, well, that's that's. Poor one out for Rey Mysterio, I guess. You know, a long time in the <laughs> ring. A long time I in the ring. I don't know if he wrestles any. He probably does, though, because, like, Lucha Dudes, like, hustle real hard. Like, they're like rappers. They keep doing it for a long time. I imagine um, that's, like, a real good... You know what's sad, though? I mean, I'm, we're going to go back to shitting on Jake Hall again, because shout out Aaron, and we always <laughs> got to shout out Aaron, is he sent me a video that Big Daddy Kane's... Uh, somebody asked him, who do you prefer... Who, who do you go with, uh, Kendrick or Drake? And he said, Jake Hall. And I'm like, why do these old rappers keep fucking, like, riding for Jake Hall? Does he buy them groceries? <laughs> <laughs> he folded their clothes. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Man. I didn't know that was gonna. I didn't know that was gonna do that well. I just. I just oh my god! You did punch up on my joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, yeah, like why do old rappers love J Cole so much? <laughs> they should love. They should love Chief Keef instead. They should. I don't think Chief Keef is polite enough to fold their clothes, though. He like robs them at the laundromat, takes their quarter. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he's trying. He's trying to set a good example now for uh, his daughter. So I don't know if that, yeah, uh, still might be the case. Cr- I mean, uh, you know, he's gonna at a minimum just gonna be hot boxing your apartment all the time. So. Likely, yeah, I can see that. We skipped over uh, "Treat Myself," which is a phenomenal song in the yeah, beginning. Another great hook. Somebody else said hook. that they felt like you know. Chief Keef is known for his hooks, which he's not really, and there are no hooks on this album, which there are. So I don't know where either. Literally, his biggest things. songs ever are his biggest songs ever because of their hooks. And there are also plenty of hooks on this album, but yeah, um, it's just that's just uh, that's moronic to think of. Hell, but well, he refer- on the song I, I just mentioned. Also, Lynch- by the way, I don't know if anybody realized, but this is a very articulately produced album. Oh yeah, super articulately produced. Shout out to Legends Never Die, man. He's very articulate. He don't, took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, don't, 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 don't shout that guy out. <laughs> I was, I was, I was fucking around, but no, I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> I, I just want him to tell me how an album is articulately produced. It is. Yes. Dude, it's Chief, speech, Chief, Chief Keef sounds too. Chief Keef sounds very articulate over a racist. Of beat. all oh, people shit, who articulately mind. produce an album, Chief Keef. <laughs> Chief Keef sounds very yes, articulate yeah. over uh, over 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 a, a banging trap beat. Thank Just you, yeah. thank you, okay. thank you, legends. Uh, <laughs> Chief Chief Keef said uh, on the song, I, "I'm laughing at the bank. You think I hit my funny bone?" Which is very funny. Also. He said, "Ha ha 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 ha." Oh, yeah, I mean he. <laughs> we're referring back to hooks, you know. But Chief Keef has no hooks, I guess. Zero hooks. Um, uh, no, I mean, wait, there's, there's, he said he has zero hooks. Uh, no, Legends didn't say the zero hooks. No, that. people, people on RYM said it, or somebody. I don't just know. somebody That's on it. RYM said something dumb. I just think, yeah, I mean, Legends is you know, Legends legend. said something baffling, which is Legends, but that was, yeah, that was he, he was going, he was undergoing a, a patch update that glitched out. That was different. <laughs> 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 uh, I like the uh, uh, again. I'm just I'm look I'm just th- remembering random Chief Keef lyrics on the album, but I like he he references Bruce Lee multiple times, multiple uh, times, which I think is uh, was also was also very funny. That was uh, super funny. He also references being tired a bunch of times. And the last track is "I'm Trying to Sleep," which I can relate to. I yeah, think his some, references. Some of his best rapping is on um, Prince Charming. 
like yep. the second like the second verse goes on for like ever and he's just like really like rapping like hard like delivery very like aggressive um this has maybe the best ball out verse on it by the way like normally i skip the ball out normally i'm like whatever it's a ball out verse like i i accept it it's like they're gonna happen this is a very good ball out verse mm-hmm. yeah on the a- on the second track yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. That he, was with, uh, uh, Gerbo was on that too, right? Yeah, yeah, which actually, yeah, like generally, I, I mean, I like Fazo Land and whatever, and then he's just been mid forever, so that was a good turbo verse too. So yeah. it was a nice, it was a nice uh, to have like a Chicago. So honestly, I actually thought that was Tad because it's always the same two of them forever. I actually did not. That's realize. true. He, he, you know what? He should have had a he should have had a feature on this. I guess that's yeah. my that, that's my yeah, one. Like, actually, like, where's the Tado feature? Because normally I'm just like, ah, fuck a Tado feature on a Keith thing. It's we've come full circle to where I'm like, where's the Tado feature? Yeah, it's I I, I usually find them uh, endearing, but. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. I'm sure the next project will have one, but yeah, I was I was looking for that as well when the track list came out, which again may which also made me think, oh, this is not coming out again. Wow, <laughs> I don't know who that either. That's a compliment to Tato or just on Herbo, but yeah, I haven't found a Herbo thing I've liked since Fazo Land, so I that was good. Is it, is it Tato or Tato? I thought it was Tato. I always thought it was Tato as well. I, I, I just, just remember it. Chief Keef saying Tato off Molly Water at one point. So that's why I think it's Tato. Yeah, that's, I, I, I always thought it was that as well. But the point, Patrick's point about uh, Herbo and Ball Out is, is well taken. Cause, and it was nice yeah, to have that, that synergy on a song because it really feels like the most, um, throwback is the wrong word, but the most like familiar from some of the previous stuff, like Keith songs, you're like, oh yeah, I could I could see that on a project from like 2017. Yeah, beat wise, it does feel like the biggest callback. Although, I, yes and no, like um, I think it was um, uh, fish calling um, fish drinking a beer who mentioned that that kind of felt like something calling back to God damn it, Kanye do it and uh. Luger's uh, ham beat, like the symphonic trap. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, which I, I read that. was going with the whole church theme, which you kind of get in the first third, but then that kind of does fade off a bit. Like, I feel like there is a, th- a bit of a three-act structure, yes and no. Like, sort of. Like, the album does have kind of... They don't necessarily, like, I feel like it doesn't necessarily sound the same throughout. Yeah. I think it is, I think it is largely well sequenced outside of the one, the the one thing that we've touched on where it was like Tony Montana flow being placed where it is, is pretty hilarious. But at the same time, I don't mind it because we've wanted that yeah. song for like, so I long. I feel like you could move that and it would fit in. Yeah, yeah, if he just moved it up a couple places, it's like it would be it would be a lot better. But the thing is, is like at the same time, it's like that song has been you know teased for so long that I'm just happy it ended up on the album. I I didn't know that that was a thing, and I felt like listening to it in the context of the album, it still worked a little bit because there are a few things in terms of list like flow wise, there are. A, few weird juxtapositions that didn't feel too jarring getting to there and you said that it's been floating around for a while so i guess it made sense if you're a fan that they would show up so yeah i mean yeah. it leaked uh like i think two three years ago at this point um mm-hmm. so yeah it's been it's been floating around. it's one that i had known about there are plenty of key fleeks that i that i probably don't know off the top of my head but that one was one that uh you know, had gotten some some traction. So I like the fact that um, I like that he talks about. Um, it has know, some of the weirdest fucking flows. I've like, ever like heard he about. he has all those. What like, the fuck is he doing on some? He of has that? all those. He has all those food bars in the middle. 
uh, like talking I love about those. talking about like uh, he, he sounds like about, Neff. he sounds like Neff doing some of that. Like I don't know. He's talking about like uh, like Euro like Euros like the 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 pita sandwich thing. Yeah. And then he's yeah. also like being a noodle knocker, <laughs> which is very funny. <laughs> It's just so goofy. Yeah, between Believe... Like, yeah, you really feel like the album should should end with, like, Prince drumming into Believe and then I'm trying to sleep. Like, that's yeah. the logical sequence. But I just don't know where you would put Tony Montana. I guess Tony maybe Montana, up toward uh, Maybe up maybe toward the beginning. Yes, after Jesus, I guess. That could work. That could work. Because you have to have it on here just for the hook and also him saying... Uh, even in kindergarten, I wasn't tattletailing. You have to have it on there just for that. Um, and just, we also, like you said, we were all waiting for, for so long. It just, it deserves to see the light of day. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, it's, that, that, it's, it's a really fun song and I'm glad it made the album. Uh, I know there were some, I'm sure some other leaks that could have, that could have made it, but you know, it is what it is. I think the album is ultimately, very well put together as we kind of touched on at the top and so i mean do we want to talk about like some of the the stuff the ones toward the end because pat said it i think believe his- is maybe one of his top 10 top five songs i absolutely love uh the whole like him saying uh she called me inconsiderate bae you talking gibberish like i love that i, I love the whole <laughs> chorus the whole chorus about like I could be in a forest and I come out with a brown bear's head or something. Yeah, that's could, so fucking silly, but like feels kind of like I don't know profound almost. And he goes back to it. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, like the the line like I could live in a jungle and uh, I would come out with like a hyena hat. Like that's it's silly, obviously, and it's it, it, in its own way. But there's a there's it's triumphant, you know, and that's it makes you smile. And for that, I'm... Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm really I, grateful I thought, that I, the song exists, you know? It's also kind of wild, too, because Believe's also a pretty long song. It's about... It's almost seven minutes long, but it, like, it doesn't feel like it overstays its welcome. Right. In his catalog, I feel like there's very few songs of that length. There's the one with Soldier on uh, Back of the Dead 3, I believe, and that's nowhere near. There's nowhere near as much rap on that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, no, it's it's rare for him to get this long. Yeah, the one with Soldier is just kind of repeated, just single lines, whereas this one's him actually rapping for a while. And like, obviously, there's the hyena head and lion head thing. But like otherwise, he's kind of actually rapping on this, whereas the other ones just kind of the two of them just kind of repeat lines. So, yeah, I think is- it's also important that you know you get the little, the I mean, outside of the intro, like you know the, the the comedic thing of it. There's the thing at the end where it's like his grandmother talking or his late grandmother, I believe, talking, um, which is like a it's from like an old music video I, I read. And it's just about, like, you know, here, here you come, like, you can't even, like, you can't even eat right, like, I don't know if you're gonna get, like, famous for this, or something like that, but he's like, she's like, I, I know one thing, when when they make it, they leave, like, that's very interesting, um, it's very deliberate putting that, that in there, um, and kind of, like, what that could mean, so not to over-intellectualize something, but I found that to be pretty touching leading into leading into the song um and then obviously all the parts where he's talking about his you know his father and his daughter like that's you know that's that's uh that's good he talked about um he's i mean when he's like I'm, I'm sad to say i turned out like my like my damn dad like that's that's pretty heavy stuff and that whole yeah. second verse is like very reflective it was. I just thought- it, it got really heavy very often on the album too. For as boisterous and like explosive as it could be, it got very introspective at points too. Yeah, I just thought this was a very, um, very colorful album that had a very powerful juxtaposition between, like you said, very boisterous moments, but also very like lively moments and it showed his growth as an artist 
And if you followed his music, it was very rewarding to get to where we're at. To get to this point. And I think ho- what I hope this album does, and I, and I think you guys would probably feel the same way. And I know we've been all over the place in this discussion and, and whatnot, but, and we still have a couple songs we can touch on. But what I hope this album does ultimately is bring people to go back to things they might have skipped over in the mid-2010s or something. When when the key fell out of mainstream favor and kind of disappeared into himself to make some, frankly, fucking, like, masterpieces. <laughs> Almighty yeah. So, Back from the Dead 2, you know, Bang 2. Um, Thoughtbreaker. So, yes, yes, Thoughtbreaker. Um, even underappreciated stuff that should have had more, like, Glowtoven, the Zaytoven collab, I mean... Nobody, which I underrated at the time, which is actually really fucking good. Yeah, Nobody Almighty, uh, the one with DP beats, Almighty DP, is yep. always been one that, that has some crazy production on it, like some amazing. You want to hear yep. great production? Listen to that one. Bang um, Part Two. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Back Even in the day, three. Gucci Sosa, which I have at a seven, which is still like that's like a fucking what nineteen year old kid doing like a track. Like he did that in a day with Gucci, and that was good as hell. Like hell yeah, yeah. Really there there, are, there is so much to mine from the well of Chiefs of Keith's career, and you can hear it on like I said the Almighty DP stuff. Patrick mentioned Thoughtbreaker, which definitely brought in some new people to him as well. But even. You, you, oh, he has so many leaks. Yeah, from, I was about to see. Yeah, I was all the, called the leak that has like. Six I was parts. just about to say you have to listen to the leak compilations. They are yeah. as concise and good as sounds. And, and the the lean, the Xanax, like all that stuff. They're, yeah, they're amazing, yeah. and they're like a hundred songs, and they're amazing. And it's just like you have most artists can't put out a hundred songs that good in a whole career. Most of them just can't buy out a hundred songs. We're it's hard. It yeah, it's not easy. And his that's work. Like, has... yeah, let's say you do ten songs an album. That's ten albums. A lot of artists don't hit ten albums. His work, his his work ethic, his talent, his evolution from a production standpoint, rapping standpoint, all of that. The the sounds that he helped pioneer and then cultivate and further throughout a, a career that has now spanned what like fourteen years now ish around that time it's like this is a his journey is so inspiring i know we've talked you know there's been a lot of there's a lot it's a silly there are a lot of silly bars out we've talked about a lot of fun fun stuff around this album but this is really like an awesome thing to see and it really makes me happy that that this exists and in 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 this form and it's taken so long and pushed back but you know christian we had you on way way back when a whole lot of red came out and we talked about how we were all so happy that album, ex- that that album existed and is about as good as it was this to yeah. me, not quite the same feeling, but a very similar feeling where it's like, I'm going to play the shit out of this for the rest of this year. And in years to come, I'm so happy it exists from, from one of my favorite artists. And it fills me with so much joy just to be able to throw it on and, and just take it all in. Honestly, just hear him go for it. The year that they fucking finally made this thing that they were going for, right? Absolutely. And I think that the, you know, Believe conveys that feeling well, Drifting Away does. And even like the, you know, the last song. Um, the, I'm trying I, I to. Lo- yeah. Yeah. Like, What's cool with Keith, if I may? Uh, you, did I. Sorry, no, 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 no. Go ahead. I was, I was, by, by all means. Thank you. Sorry. Um, what I thought was really cool, and like I hate when people are like, "Oh, traps like punk music." Like I hate when people do that. Um, but I, I understand, like, in terms of like composition, where the overlap is, you know. And I thought like this record, in the regard of it just being very brash, uh, very do it yourself, very just raw. And not raw in the sense that it was like scuzzy sounding, but just like super, just, just like it was hard as fuck and so out of the box. Like it kind of had that like punk energy to it, just on a pure like energy level. 
which is pretty cool because people have often, you know, kind of alluded to like this overlap of trap and punk. And there is some in like ethos, I guess, but this was like one of the more obvious sonic examples, similar, like, like you had mentioned before to whole lot of red. Yeah, no, I, I could definitely, it, it's an interesting comparison to make and, and Patrick alluded to it as well with like, you know, we, we were all, the football was being pulled away from us, Charlie Brown style, uh, repeatedly with this album. And so much so that when the track was got released, like earlier this week, or the week of us recording this, we're, for reference, we're recording this the day after the album dropped. But earlier the week, the, the official track was came out, and I'm like, ah, it's still probably not coming out. <laughs> like, I just, <laughs> I, I wasn't ready to believe. Um, but yeah, the, the minute it came out, and it was also nice to see a lot of the rap internet sphere come around and, and celebrate this album, at least from what I've seen. And I think that's so cool from an artist that all we did for the first part of our discussion, you know, tonight was talk about legacy artists and how they're at least in this stage of their careers, disappointing us and how we should all kind of move on. This is an artist where they've been, you know, Keith has been around the block more than, more than enough times. He's been, frankly disenfranchised by the music industry um you know very likely done dirty in his past by the industry and and has had struggles within his personal life and all of that and has managed to overcome it it's an inspiring story it's the other side of the coin and you can he, this album feels you can hear it like he's come out on the other side i don't want to make too many inferences into the man's personal life because i obviously don't know him and um, i can only go off of what we hear in the music but the music is beautiful, and, uh, and it, again, as I already said a few times, and I'm repeating myself, it just it makes me so happy that it exists, and, and I'm glad we have it. But great music, and we waited so long for it. It's good to have, and yeah, not much else to say. So thank you guys for for listening. Yep. I know it's it's been a while since we've uh, since we've we've been giving you episodes. But we've got we've got more in the pipeline. Promise. We're in the chamber. Christian, thank you for being with us. and thank you uh, for having me. Sorry for my mic troubles. <laughs> no worries. All right. He's Caleb. He's Christian. I'm Patrick. And we've got a lot more exciting stuff here for you in the pipeline. We're living off Borrowed Time. Our intro music is by Yoon Classic, uh, Borrowed Time Instrumental. Our outro music, as always, is by Can Kangek Stagnated Pace. And we're living off Borrowed Time. See you next time. Peace out.